morning and welcome to one of the most quoted and least read books of the Bible. My name is Stuart Smith and with my friend Colin McLeod we're reading Scripture Union Word Live Bible passages and these Together for Christ podcasts which today take us into the book of the prophet Isaiah. And most of us who are believers will know about suffering servants and rising up on wings like eagles, but the whole book of Isaiah is intimidating in its length and confusing in its content, and so we often turn from it to other books of the Bible instead. But over the next few days, we're going to read from the beginning of the book of the prophet Isaiah and hear what, through him, God has to say to us. So before we embark on this adventure together, let us pray. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have given prophets your words so that we can read and understand. And even when the books are long and the history is vague and the concepts are difficult and the message is challenging, would you open up our hearts and minds so that we can be blessed by what you would share with us. We believe that you love us and you speak to us to help us. And so take the words that we hear today and use them for our blessing, your glory, and through us the work of your church in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the vision that Isaiah son of Amos saw regarding Judah and Jerusalem during the times of the kings of Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Heaven and earth, you're the jury. Listen to God's case. I had children and raised them well, and they turned on me. The ox knows whose boss, the mule knows the hand that feeds him, but not Israel. My people don't know up from down. Shame, misguided God dropouts, staggering under their guilt baggage, villainous gang, bands of vandals, My people have walked out on me, their God, and turned their backs on the holy of Israel, walked off, and never looked back. Why bother even trying to do anything with you when you just keep to your bull-headed ways? You keep beating your heads against brick walls. Everything within you protests against you, from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. Wounds and bruises and running sores, untended, unwashed, unbandaged. Your country is laid waste, your cities burned down, your land is destroyed by outsiders while you watch, reduced to rubble by barbarians. Daughter Zion is deserted like a tumble-down shack on a dead-end street, like a tar-paper shanty on the wrong side of the tracks, like a sinking ship abandoned by the rats. If God of the angel armies hadn't left us a few survivors, we'd be as desolate as Sodom, doomed, just like Gomorrah. Listen to my message, you Sodom-schooled leaders. Receive God's revelation, you Gomorrah-schooled people. Why this frenzy of sacrifices? God's asking, don't you think I've had my fill of burnt sacrifices, rams and plump grain-fed calves? Don't you think I've had my fill of blood from bulls, lambs and goats? When you come before me, whoever gave you the idea of acting like this, running here and there, doing this and that, all this sheer commotion in the place provided for worship. Quit your worship charades. I can't stand your trivial religious games, monthly conferences, weekly Sabbath special meetings, 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 meetings. I can't stand one more. Meetings for this, meetings for that. I hate them. You've worn me out. I'm sick of your religion, 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 while you go right on sinning. When you put on your next prayer performance, I'll be looking the other way. No matter how long or loud or often you pray, I'll not be listening. And do you know why? Because you've been tearing people to pieces and your hands are bloody. Go home and wash up, clean up your act, sweep your lives clean of your evil doings so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong, learn to do good, work for justice. Help the down and out, stand up for the homeless, go bat for the defenceless. Come, 
Sit down, let's argue this out. This is God's message. If your sins are blood red, they'll be snow white. If they're red like crimson, they'll be like wool. If you'll willingly obey, you'll feast like kings. But if you're willful and stubborn, you'll die like dogs. That's right. God says so. Amen. And I pray that God will bless this to us. So no introduction to the new prophecy. Isaiah speaking to Judah around about the time of the various Assyrian invasions that led to the exile of uh, the other half of Israel, the country of Israel itself, and Judah to a narrow escape. It was God's last warning before Judah's own exile into Babylon. And during that time, Isaiah was the interpreter of the times, and clearly hard times. An invasion is already being described here, a country laid waste and cities burnt down. So it is a stop and think moment for the nation and something needs to be done about the state that they are in. But before we come to the solution, we come to the identity of the people and they are the children of God. That's what makes it so difficult for God and why his cry is so plaintive. He's not being ignored by strangers or turned against by voters who once voted for him. He feels like he is a father rejected by his children. They should know that he is the wise one. They should have learned that he cares for them. They should know that he would provide for them all that they would ever need if only they would treat him with the respect that a parent deserves from those who have been raised and loved and provided for. And that's the dilemma of the human problem that we face, that as human beings we are all in one sense the children of God, not the special in sense in which the children of Israel were called as Abraham's descendants to follow him alone out of all the other nations to be an example to the rest, but nevertheless created by God and with the opportunity to call God our Father and yet living in rebellion against him, trying to do independently what we don't need to do without God and so bringing trouble on ourselves and pain to God, that unique loving relationship which should bind human beings and God together is broken by our rebellion. And it's a rebellion which has brought trouble on them externally, the invasions and the destruction of their cities. But before we get that far, Isaiah phones on, homes in on the internal discontent that people have. You keep beating your heads against brick walls, but everything within you protests against you. People who are not at peace with God just don't feel right. Things don't work out and they look for financial compensation or for success in sports or business or family life or in some other way. They try to work out that sense of well-being and make for themselves a happiness which can in fact only ever be found in relation with God. And if we don't have that parent figure in our lives, then our insides will always be mixed up. From the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, nothing's working right. And that's Isaiah confronting the people with the fact that there's no hope for peace of mind without a right relationship with God. It's become very popular these days for people to talk about their mental health as being their problem for um, musicians to drop out of concert tours or sports personalities to drop out of competitions because their mental health is not right. And it's good that that's recognised. Mental health is a big problem, but there can be no mel- mental healthiness if people are not making room for God in their heads. And until we submit to him and learn from him and sort ourselves out with him, the rest of the pieces just don't fit into a constructive, happy way of life. And that's what Israel is finding. And what they have hit upon is the wrong solution. They've turned to religion. And you might think, surely that's good. God wants us to pray and praise and in the Old Testament to offer sacrifices. But here God says, No, next time you pray, I'm going to turn away. I'm sick and tired of all your meetings because religion by itself is not a solution if what God reveals of himself to us when we meet together in praise and prayer and around God's word has not worked through into an adjustment in our lifestyles and our thinking 
which produces that peace which belongs to a mind that has made room uh, for God. And that's something we need to worry about because every time we come across a difficulty in church and uh, meet together to try and solve what it is that's not as it should be, someone is bound to say we should pray about it and maybe organise special prayer meetings. And I have nothing against special prayer meetings, but if there are things we are going to do to try and regain God's favour, without listening to God when he speaks to us and tells us there's something else we need to change, then they're just a waste of time. And that's what God says here. God who has commanded worship, who has ordered the building of temples, who has organized sacrifices, puts his fingers in his ears and said, no, 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 I don't want any more. I'm tired of all of this. And the reason is because the endless worship is not re not leading to reformed lives. They go to church and then go home and do wrong they help themselves to another prayer meeting, but they don't help the down and outs. They go to the house of God, but they don't build houses for the homeless. There's no way to have religious peace without social justice. These two just don't fit together. We cannot find peace with God if we are not caring for his children in the way that he cares for us. The greatest commandment, Jesus said, is to love God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbour as yourself. And if you claim to do the one and don't do the other, then you're not just half a Christian, you're a liar. And until the practical caring for one another becomes our way of life, then we'll find no peace with God and there is no hope for us. The rebellion will continue, the mental health problems will follow, the worship will be pointless and the society will be sick and sore. So Isaiah is confronting Israel with a real difficulty, or Judah rather, with a real difficulty. It's also in Israel, and uh, to show how bad it is, Israel will be taken off by the Assyrians. Judah's last chance to do something about it. And maybe the same is true of us today. Maybe the problems in our churches, or the problems for our churches, are not only the unbelief of the people who don't come, but the partial belief of the people who do and our failure to put into practice with our time and with our money, the commands that God has given us to be loving influences for good in our world and our society. Still hope, in spite of all these difficulties, God, who is going to stop listening to our prayer meetings, is not going to stop speaking to us as long as there is still time. Time to blot out the sins, time to wash clean the garments, time to willingly obey so that we can feast like kings and not die like dogs in our stubborn and willful refusal to do what we've heard God say. Let us pray. And thank you, Father, that you do speak to us. But oh, what a responsibility to hear the word of God. Others who don't know you perhaps have more excuse than we do for not helping our neighbours, for not loving our friends, for not giving to our charities, for not supporting people in our community who have the difficulties that we have freed herself from because you have been good to us in so many different ways. So would you confront us with the injustice in our society for which we are responsible, either because we've caused it or because we've not ended it, and challenge us to do as you did when Jesus came into the world and found the sick and healed them and the hungry and fed them and the lonely and talked to them and those in distress and brought them peace. Let us be active peace seekers and peacemakers and do gooders in your world because we have heard you speak and are not just singing songs to you but are listening to the words that you have spoken to us. Lord, change us so that we can be world changers so that we can be children again, so that our prayers can be answered and our praise can be full and rewarding as we come before you as those who have heard and done what you have given us to do. In Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with me today in Bible reading and in prayer. <laughs> 